I'm going to be giving a medication via a peg tube. I've already knocked on my patient's door, come in, introduced myself, provided for privacy. I'm going to wash my hands and identify my patient. bringing my mar with me can you tell me your name and your date of birth okay and do you have any allergies no great i've already done my first check when i got my medication and my second check in a private place so i will now do my third check I'm going to read the medication name on my mar and on my medication read the dose on the mar and on the medication and check the root. It should say PEG on there. This tells us that pharmacy is aware that it's going through a PEG tube and it's not a PO medication. We're checking that it is the correct time and we have the right frequency. Okay. If we have liquid medication available, that is preferable. Um, if not, make sure that you verify that the medication can be crushed. You shouldn't be crushing anything that's in a capsule or anything that is an extended release medication. I'm going to put gloves on. And we will crush our medication. This is one option for a medication crusher. There are a lot of them. Uh, some hospitals now have individual crushing mechanisms where you just twist it onto um, or into a capsule area. Uh, this is an old school one, but this is what you'll use here. For each medication, you should crush them separately. So you'll have one of these plastic pouches Go ahead and drop the medication that you need in there. You lift it up and then push down. Do this a few times, moving it around so you make sure that it is fully crushed. Okay, looks pretty good there. You will then pour it into your cup, making sure not to lose any of that powder. Okay. And then mix it with at least 20 milliliters of fluid. We have water here. You might have to agitate it to really mix it. And you can let it sit there so it dissolves. All right. While we wait for that to dissolve, we are going to check on our patient, ask them if they're feeling nauseated at all. Um, if they have tube feed going, we'll go ahead and pause that. And then we are going to check our residual. So to do that, Get an empty syringe, place that right here. You have to turn the stopcock so that it's open where you want it to be. And then you'll gently aspirate, pulling until you're not getting any more fluid out. This is a 60 milliliter syringe. You want to make sure that your residual is less than um, one hour of the flow rate of tube feeding if the patient is on a tube feed or 150 milliliters so you need a receptacle to put this in as you pull out the, res the residual if you have more than 60 milliliters we don't have any residual so we'll go ahead and turn that to the off position before removing our syringe And make sure that is dissolving. We're 
You're going to flush the two with 20 to 30 millimeter, milliliters of fluid. And before you put anything in, you wanna make sure that your patient is in a high fowler's position. As long as they can tolerate that. All right, turning that stopcock again. If you have tube feed, it would be running in this port, so you would use this one to flush and to give your medications. Now go ahead and flush that, making sure that it flushes easily. You shouldn't have to push it hard to get anything in there. And once that's in, we can take this off. And I'm going to remove this plunger. Opening that up. And we can just pour our medication right in. It should go in easily by gravity. And then you'll flush with about 20 milliliters after. If you have several medications that you're giving, make sure you are mixing each one separately and flushing with 20 to 30 milliliters of fluid in between. And you are keeping track of the intake so that you can record that. We are going to keep our patient in a high Fowler's position for at least 30 minutes after instilling medication and then assess that they're feeling okay and they're not nauseated that they're tolerating the medication well. We'll document that the medication was given, take off our gloves and wash our hands, make sure our patient doesn't need anything and the bed is all the way in the lowest position, and that's it.